So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think we all know each other here, but this is being recorded. So I'm Alex Gonzalez, and I'm the lead Adobe specialist here on campus, soon to be hopefully one of the three specialists. We had two vacancies for it. Um, and today what we're going to do is talk about using um, masks in Premiere Pro. And we are going to use two asset files, two little videos. We're going to trim them down. We're just exploring how to use the tool. Um, so we're not going to do anything too intense or too long either. The two videos we're working from, I did download them from Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, which is a free um, stock multimedia site, which is awesome. I know we have Adobe stock, but I didn't want to use any of our premium credits to download videos. So uh, hopefully you got those downloaded. Do we Are we ready in that sense? And maybe Premiere Pro is open for us. I'm just watching today, so. Oh, okay. That's, that's good. You can just watch or you can follow along. That's okay. totally cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, first and foremost, is, has anybody here used a mask before in, in Premiere Pro or Photoshop, Illustrator? Have, have we heard that word before? Yes. Awesome. I've used it mostly in Photoshop mm -hmm. and I've tried to use it in Premiere Pro. Ah, okay, gotcha. Um, from coming from a photography background, uh, I find them much easier to use in Photoshop. Also because you're dealing with, with one image instead of a moving <laughs> image, but the whole interface is, is pretty different. So, um, but it's good to have a background, piece of background knowledge. So this website I've made for us is our resource. And this is kind of a little different where it really is just a series of step-by-step -step instructions to, to give you ideas of how to use the masks. So the first section is just saying, what are masks? And uh, the short of it, it's I, I like to talk about masking tape, right? When you're when you're painting something, you mask it off with the tape so that the paint doesn't hit it. You haven't actually removed it. You've just done something that keeps the paint from touching it or seeing it. So that's the kind of instruction the software receives. It says, oh, you've masked here. I'm not going to show your image. I'm not going to apply the effect. The video will not play in this portion. It's really... Um, it's really the magic of a lot of the cool things we see with photography and video. And even in Illustrator, you do some interesting things with masks too, to put confined shapes inside of other shapes that get masked within them. Um, so if you wanna learn more about masking in Premiere Pro, I put the really nice edX, HelpX article here. Um, and what I wanna say before we completely jump into this is that Premiere Pro is not the best tool for complex masking and complex editing in general. That's that's what After Effects is for. Um, so if you find yourself really spending a lot of time with a mask, you might it might be time to learn a little bit of After Effects, which is a little bit intimidating, but you can send it into After Effects, use something called the Rotoscope or some of their other tools, and then back into Premiere Pro. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about that too. And what we're going to look at is using a mask and a mosaic effect, making um, selective adjustments. Then we're going to talk about getting a mask to move along with your subject. That's called tracking. We'll talk about using masking to combine multiple videos. A common way is like picture in picture, but maybe we want to do something that's a little more interesting, like replace an image on a television. And then this final one is just a resource. Uh, if you are ready to try and learn the rotoscope brush. Rotoscope scoping is basically just tracing frame by frame. You go to the next frame, you move your mask over. Um, it's an animation term. Uh, so this is here for when you're ready. And again, uh, my background is photography. So I, I found, I watched the video on rotoscoping, which seemed really intimidating at first. And having tried it in the past year or two, I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is not so bad. It's just a more complex space because you're in three dimensions in some ways. Um, all right, we feel ready? I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Yep, I'm ready. Okay, I got that. That's awesome. 
Okay, so if you've recently updated Premiere Pro, which I hope you have, the um, home screen and the workspace have changed, and in my opinion, for the better for, for people like us that um, aren't you know, in the industry producing video all the time. So the splash screen is your project screen, and I think it kind of took some cues from Premiere Rush, and in this case, it's kind of good. So I'm gonna go to new project, and I'm going to just click on my video called walking because that's, that's a lady walking. <laughs> and when I do that, I can also name it up here. I'll just call it mask demo 51922. Um, and you can do other things like name the actual sequence because you can have multiple sequences. But uh, we're just going to choose walking, name it. And, you know, when you're working on a real project, the, the most important thing, well, not the most important, but a vital thing is it's file management. So we always consider how you're storing your files and um, so that you don't get that horrible red screen with an exclamation point. All right, so now when we click create, it goes ahead and creates a new sequence based on the file that we selected. So it's not pulling up this screen where it's asking which video engine you wanna use and how many pixels and all that. It just matches the source, which is nice. So this video, from Pexels is a lady going for a walk. And what I'm gonna do, because we're gonna do some tracking, um, which is a frame by frame analysis, I'm gonna cut it short. I'm gonna cut it to actually right here. Um, and again, today's just about looking at masking. So there might be some things that I don't dwell on very much. Um, I'm gonna cut the clip and move it delete the rest of it. I like to press Command or Control K. There's a few different ways to do this. So I'll just delete that. There's also a little bit of black space in the beginning. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and find the black. There we go, the fade, I guess is what we call that. Command K again, or Control, and move it over. Okay, so I'm in the edit workspace here. And you can see I have home, import, edit, export. And my timeline's here with the blue playhead that just determines what part of the video is displayed in the um, preview panel here. The left-hand side has effects con effect controls, which we're going to spend a lot of time with today. If you don't have a clip selected in your timeline, there's nothing displayed here. The other area we're gonna spend time with is the effects menu on the right-hand side where you can find effects and adjustments. And we are gonna play with two of them, um, one of them, the mosaic filter, and the other one, the one of the Lumetri adjustments, which is really nice. Um, so I think a common thing a lot of folks want to know how to do is kind of blur someone's face. Maybe we have a FERPA concern or something. And the way to do that with a mask and Premiere Pro is to have your clip selected, go over to effects in the top right. And I, I find it easier to just search for mosaic because there are a lot of different effects in there. Um, we have presets mosaics, but we actually want video effects, stylize and mosaic. And the way these work is you just click and drag it onto your clip. So let's see this clip turn into a mosaic of pixels. Click, drag, and drop. And now you can see it has an effect where <laughs> it, it's literally 100 pixels right now, so it's, it's uh, not showing as much. Um, I'm gonna press home to send my playhead back to the start of the clip. So now if we look at our effect controls, we have the standard ones, the um, position, the scale, which is size, rotation, uh, these other effects, you have opacity. But now we also have one called mosaic. And if it's not open, you can open it right here just by clicking the, the carrot, the arrow. And if you want to disable the effect, you just click on the letters FX. And I can just turn it off just like that, just so I get an idea of what's going on. So the first thing I'll do with this effect is increase the number of horizontal blocks, which you can do by, it's called a scrubby adjustment. You can click and drag to the right or to the left to change the number. Um, 
but I find I get I can't get the exact number. Maybe I'm just not very precise. So I think I'll just enter 75 here for horizontal and 75 for vertical. Now we can get a better idea of what that effect is doing, right? Um, and sharp colors will just make the pixels more defined. So that's kind of a stylistic choice in, in my opinion. Um, so now what I wanna do is I, I want this effect to only appear on her face and you're using a mask. And I, that's why I like to use the mosaic because it's, it's the most, one of the most easy to understand ways of, of seeing what a mask does. So right here where it says mosaic, right underneath there are my masking tools. There's the ellipse, there's the polygon, and there's the freehand pen tool, which uh, it's not so bad. And after you draw any of these, you can also add and remove points and customize them. So I'm just gonna click on the ellipse and what we should see is the mosaic masked inside of a circle. Pretty good. So now this will apply a mosaic effect only within the defined space. Um, so you can resize, you can rotate if you move your mouse to the outside of the points. And one thing that I really like to do is feather it. So right now, I'm going to click here in this blank space. You can see a pretty sharp line where the mosaic ends and the regular video plays. So what I like to do is, if we look here in our effects controls, mosaic now has a mask called mask one. So I can put a couple masks on, but if, if you're trying multiple masks, um, you might be better off in After Effects as well. But if I click on mask, it brings it back. And here outside this handle is an open circle. And that's our feather adjustment. There's a slider for it too, but I like to use this instead. And if you just pull this out, the edge becomes feathered, and which means it, it so slowly disappears into the actual video. So if we see now, that kind of obvious edge has been reduced. Now, the only problem is our mask stays in its one position while she kind of bounces and moves around, right? So it's possible her head could pop out of the mosaic um, and ruin that anonymity we were looking for. Um, any questions so far about a mask and the mosaic? Okay, so it used to be that when you got your mask on, you would then proceed a couple frames forward of the video, but and then you would drop what's called a keyframe to tell Premiere Pro to, to save this change in location, move it forward, change its location, drop another keyframe, and Premiere Pro would kind of split the difference between those changes and create a little animation for you. Um, and it was pretty tedious and often didn't come out that great. But we don't have to do that anymore. We can just use the auto tracking uh, with the tracking here. So where it says mask path, I have a few options to mask it. And I think it's easiest just to use the play button that says track selected mask forward. Just make sure you are at the very beginning of the clip because it's gonna track from where you are onward. Um, for us, for our purposes, I clicked the wrench and I turned on preview so you can watch what Premiere Pro does. Um, it's not magic, so sometimes it doesn't work as great as we would like, but it, it should do something for us. Otherwise, I recommend having preview turned off because it makes it take about twice as long, which is why we're working with six seconds of video. Okay, and you can tell it to just go with position or if you want it to try and rotate if it sees some of this or also scale if it's noticing a change in size. So let's just do all three and let's click play. And you can watch it going frame by frame. It is actually moving the mask. It does pretty good with faces. Um, and even rotating that you can see here, it's kind of rotating to the right now because that's what she's doing. She's kind of like a happy walk um, and giving us what might take us, you know, half an hour to do ourselves, uh, it can do it in under a minute 
Uh, and then you can go and modify the keyframes yourself um, if you notice any mistakes. But in this case, I'm gonna say this is probably good enough. Um, Premiere Pro is a pretty demanding piece of software. So if you're really focusing and editing, I suggest closing anything else that you have open. Even just having Zoom open, um, this tracking took twice as long as, as when I usually do it, but it did it. I'm gonna press play. Oops, I'm gonna press home and then play. And we can see the mosaic and it's kind of hard to, to see, but you saw it in the preview. It is following her around pretty good. We don't have to worry uh, about that loss of anonymity. And if you decide you didn't actually want a mask, um, you can't click on the mask and press delete. You have to go over to the mask and effects and press delete. So that's one little thing that you should <laughs> have in your mind. Um, and that deleted the mask, not the mosaic. And I can just disable it as well. I'm gonna undo command control Z and just hide my mosaic for now. So we're gonna do this again a few different ways just so you get an idea of how masks are used. And then, um, then there'll be time for questions or to, to have a super nice day. So are we, we ready to check out using a, a mask for a local adjustment? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate everybody, <laughs> everybody's feedback. Okay. So I think a really common use of masks is to balance your exposure. Um, oftentimes, if your sky looks great, your foreground looks dark. If your foreground looks good, the sky is too bright. Um, so usually we, we settle on having a darker foreground and fixing it because you can't bring back um, things that are overexposed as easily. So that's the case in this video. She's walking in the shadows of the buildings. And what I want to do is just brighten her face a little bit. And what I can use is the Lumetri, uh, Lumetri color menu. So again, I have to make sure I have her clip selected, which I do. I'm going to go over to effects. I'm going to go ahead and close the effects one. And I'm going to choose Lumetri color. And Lumetri color has a lot of corrections uh, that might be familiar to Lightroom or the editing app in your phone where you can play with exposure. Oh, it doesn't do that. Um, you can adjust the temperature and all those good things. In fact, let's do a little temperature. Let's, let's warm her up. That always helps kind of make a subject pop. And you might've noticed I didn't drag and drop Lumetri onto the clip. Just by starting to adjust here, it went ahead and added Lumetri color over here in the clips effect controls, which is this, this menu is will, will change depending on which clip you have selected. Okay, so I warmed it up a little bit and I just like to use curves. You can brighten it whichever way you like. I just, I'm, I'm a curves fan. So here I will just click on my curve and pull it up. I'm only worried about how she looks. Um, so I want to get a decent exposure on her. Um, I'd say about like that is pretty good. And if we look over here in effects controls, we have Lumetri color. I could find curves there again as well as on um, basic correction. Uh, it's a little less nice to look at it here as it is on the right hand side for some of those. You don't get the sliders. And I can disable this at any point just to see the before and after. And what I'm gonna do now is, is mask again. So this time, instead of doing the circle, I'm gonna just freehand the mask. And actually, no, let's, let's make a circle and modify it. Let's, let's do one step at a time. So I click the circle and you can see wherever it is. Oh, hold on, I have two masks now, sorry. There we go, <laughs> circle wherever that is, is getting the Lumetri adjustment. And you might notice it really could benefit from a feathered edge. So we'll definitely feather the edge and uh, do a few other things too. So what I'd like to do with the mask selected, I'm gonna add a point here and you can just see my mouse turns into a pen with a plus sign. I can add a point there and I can just misshape this a little bit and I can add a point 
well, I, could, I guess I can just pull this here. So that has given me more of a, a window shape, if you will. And you might spend time to make this look a lot like the shape of her. Um, we're not gonna do that today. You could do that with the pen tool and just click around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and feather it quite a bit, maybe like that. I'm gonna click in this blank space to see how it looks. There's our, our uh, sharp edge is gone, right? It's, uh, it's pretty obvious before and after if I were to turn it off and on, you might notice, okay, some of the edges are getting brighter as well, but um, that's kind of the refinement you'll work on as you get more comfortable with the tool. Okay, so now the same problem as before, if I press play, uh, it doesn't move with her. She gets a little darker over here and it's kind of moving around. Does Premiere Pro have a better selection tool? So what you're describing is what you would do in After Effects. It's called the rotoscope. And the way the rotoscope works is I could draw a line just down the middle of her and it would expand and find her edges. Um, so Premiere Pro doesn't have that tool, but After Effects does. And it's just, uh, I'm pretty sure you can just right click I'll replace with, so you might have to open it in After Effects and then replace it with a composition. Um, I'm not as familiar. I always have to, to relearn it, but it's a super good question. Um, okay, so what we wanna do is go ahead and track it again. So I'm gonna click on the mask, put my clip at the very beginning and go ahead and press play. And we're gonna watch this mask kind of move around. Um, and again, this could have been refined pretty quickly. I could have added more points and just brought it closer to her, her head and it would follow her around too. I just, um, I don't think everybody wanted to watch me pen tool for a little bit. I did think everyone would want to watch the tracking compute. <laughs> it's coming. Uh, I, I actually like watching that mask change positions and see it do a pretty nice job like that. Uh, and here we would introduce an issue where the hand will stay dark. And so I would either, I would, I would just manually expand the mask there probably, or do something more complex and after effects. But you can see it's not bad for, for something that only takes a couple minutes and it could be even more refined uh, given, given the time. But she doesn't look like she's in the shadows anymore. All right, any questions about using masks and the Lumetri adjustment to, to do what we call a local or selective adjustment? And you could do any host of things, you know, you could, you could just, Make her, make her black and white, right? <laughs> or if you wanted, you could click inverted and it would make everything but her black and white. We do have a small issue where it's also making everything brighter, uh, which kind of canceled out what we were trying to do, but that's okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's all pretty cool. Yeah, thank you. I, I think so too. One hundred. Okay, the next thing we'll look at is just using masks to put two videos together. Um, so I'm going to just drop my other video in here. I'm just gonna have her show up on this TV. I, it's, it's, I know, pretty, pretty high level thinking, but <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and one of the important things to consider when you're combining videos is the order, which layer, which clip is gonna be above the other. Um, is it easier to mask the shape of her and put it on top of the TV? Or is it easier to make a hole in the TV and just have this video play underneath? In my opinion, um, I always like to make, make holes and show what's behind instead of trying to perfectly fit something inside. But that's also a user choice and um, uh, yeah, 
up to you. <laughs> so I'm gonna drop it here and put it above the walking clip. And same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and, and press Command K. And you'll actually notice that uh, this clip was higher resolution. This is a 4K clip, I think. And the other one was just 1080p. So what I'm gonna do is scale the TV clip down. I'm gonna click on it, go over to the effect controls and to scale. And I'll just click and drag down on this until it fits in there. So, oops, I went too far. There's a little bit of a lag on my end. Really? You can also double click and just size it yourself if you like to do things visually like me. Okay, so this time we're gonna use a mask to just cut out the TV. And you'll see it's, it's just all the same thing different ways. That looks pretty good. All right, so this time we're gonna use just a built-in effect control called opacity, which just controls how transparent the layer is, or the clip, not the layer. So I'm gonna choose the pen tool. I'm going to click and drag to create a little Bezier curve. And just try and get it kind of on there. We can adjust it after the facts, so oops. Uh-oh, oh, I hit spacebar. <laughs> I try and make this do things that can't really do, uh, that I'm used to doing in Illustrator and Photoshop. So that's my own pitfall. Okay, this is a little weird looking, but I can just go and adjust the handles out and do whatever I need to do. No big deal. And just like uh, before when I was talking about inverting, we'll notice that we got the opposite of what we wanted. We just have a TV screen floating here, which is, I guess, kind of cool. So I'm just gonna click the inverted checkbox. And now you can kind of see, and actually I have a better idea of how to fix this. So this ended up way down here. I don't know how that happened. That should be up there probably feather it again a tiny bit. And now what I need to do is go to walking to the clip of her. I'm gonna make the scale less. I'm just gonna to go to effect controls, scale, and just shrink it down. And then position, I'm gonna grab the Y and move it up. And let's change our view to fit again. And if I press play, Oh, it's freezing. What's thinking? Um, I could also, yeah, okay, excellent. So I can also introduce a little bit opacity uh, to, to have the TV show up on top of her a little bit so that it doesn't look like it's, it's exactly superimposed. Um, again, this is something you could actually use blend modes in After Effects and do some more high level work, but uh, let's go ahead and press play and see, okay. It's inside the TV, but the guy is, is adjusting and holding it in place. So we're also going to go ahead and track it. So it's the same game. I'm gonna click on TV. Oh, I changed her opacity, not the TV's opacity. That's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna click mask path, just like before. And, oh, it didn't do the preview. That's okay. Save us a tiny bit of time. And that really was um, the intended workshop here. I'm, I'm trying to make things a little more uh, chunked out for us so that it's something that you either follow along or hopefully feel ready to try it out yourself as well. Um, I'm gonna stop talking because it's super choppy. Uh, give it a minute.
Uh, right, we did it. <laughs> um, so like I said, Premiere Pro does take a lot of power from your computer. But uh, hopefully this was helpful. Um, the rest of the time is ours. If, if you would like to ask any questions, if you would like to see anything else, I am absolutely available. And if you also are happy to just have had 30 minutes of Adobe to your day and then go on, uh, please feel free to have a wonderful day and thank you for joining.